Well, good morning, everyone, and uh, thank you, Ben, for your presentation. Thank you, Mark, for your presentation, and many thanks to all of you who participate in uh, this uh, webinar this morning. Uh, my name is Paweł Wargocki. I'm from the Technical University of Denmark. And before going to my presentation, I'll use the opportunity to be the last speaker in the session. So I would like to round up the two earlier presentations by two slides uh, very quickly um, on IQ metric. This one slide is, um, is a quote from the paper uh, that uh, I had a pleasure to be a co-author and published 2016 in Building an Environment, which looked at the um, um, effects of um, green buildings uh, on indoor air quality. And in this um, paper, we actually considered uh, the importance of uh, IAQ metric. And we wrote that the lack of IAQ metric or disagreement what should constitute IAQ metric is a significant barrier holding back innovation of IAQ conducive technologies, emergence of undocumented methods of measurements of IAQ claiming that their high efficiency and authenticity, this all resulting in undervaluing the importance of IAQ in different credit schemes and compliance metrics related to built environment. I think it's an important statement that although we see different approaches um, that were presented by Mark and by uh, Ben, basically the direction um, is very uh, good and Annex 86 is a uh, hope to bring some solution to the issue of IQ metric because uh, without that metric, and I will come back to this in my presentation, it, it is very difficult to um, characterize um, indoor environmental uh, and especially indoor air quality, and then use this uh, to um, design ventilation and other um, the methods to control the quality of indoor air in buildings. And another another important um, oh sorry another important uh, slide that I uh, want to summarize the pre two presentation is that although there is some disagreements and we don't know everything. And there will be always chemi new chemicals that will be coming. And uh, we will not know sufficient epidemiologic, will not have sufficient epidemiologic info, epidemiological information about the impact on man. And we will always argue whether there is sufficient epidemiological evidence for those. So um, instead of uh, arguing about uh, and speculating which are more important than the others, I think it makes sense to work on the information that we have and use the information on the contaminants that have been shown by different bodies to harm the population. And I think those should be included in the metric. And some of those have been actually mentioned by Benjamin and by Mark. So these are just two slides to summarize the two other presentations. I want to take you in a little bit different direction now which uh, and present another type of approach to characterize or rate indoor environmental quality this time. So it is a little bit uh, uh, um, more than just indoor air quality and present a new method that was developed um, for rating um, the indoor environmental quality and it was a part of the um, project that was called ALDREN and was supported by uh, EU Horizon 2020 pro uh, uh, program. The title of the project was um, Alliance for Deep Renovation in Buildings. And uh, the main objective was to basically um, increase the, um, uh, suggest the tools that will increase the number of uh, energy retrofits um, in Europe. And um, specifically, this project looked at a um, few tools that are mentioned here. One tool was to develop a harmonized energy performance rating. Uh, in, in other words, to develop a method that uh, for energy performance uh, um, rating of buildings that is harmonized across uh, Europe so that we use the same um, methodology and we can compare 
the energy performance of buildings uh, in different countries. The other um, goal and the tool that was developed by the project was the reduction of the gap between predicted and actual energy uh, performance in buildings. One goal that I will uh, focus in my presentation was an inclusion of indoor environmental quality evaluation of indoor environmental quality in the scope of deep energy renovation. And then uh, uh, one uh, uh, tool was also to link the potential benefits, all benefits that are associated with energy retrofit of buildings, with um, economic uh, uh, um, economic benefits. And uh, finally, it, uh, the project also developed a building, building passport that integrates all the doc documents related to the renovation of the buildings including the so-called uh, RENOMAP, which is a renovation roadmap. So how to perform the renovation of a building. I have no time to speak about all of them, but for those who are interested, please visit the Aldrin homepage where uh, the, the, all those packages are described and also results of the project that has been completed last year uh, are presented. I will speak only about indoor rating of indoor environmental quality in buildings. So why it is important to look at the indoor environmental quality as such? It is because it is mandated by the um, uh, energy performance of buildings directive. So um, this uh, um, uh, rating is needed to guarantee that um, IQ is not degraded during renovation in order to document any improvements after renovation for the purpose of estimating any additional benefits, so-called non-energy benefits that are coming um, in, from the renovation. So in on top of the energy benefits, you uh, basically by rating indoor environmental quality, we can document that there are additional benefits that basically support and provide an additional incentive for performing the uh, energy retrofit. This is the part of the um, directive that actually describes uh, the need for this uh, rating, uh, uh, we, in which the directive says that each member shall establish a long-term renovation strategy to support an evident um, and provide this renovation strategy shall encompass an evidence-based estimate of expected energy savings and wider benefits, such as those related to health, safety, and air quality. So in the project, our approach was very pragmatic and we just wanted to use the uh, um, uh, approaches that have been proposed pre previously to rate indoor environmental quality. So what we did is basically we reviewed uh, different green building certification sch schemes, standards, several projects and the research articles to find out in which way indoor environmental quality is rated, assessed, measured, um, and what um, approaches are proposed to determine the, the quality of indoor environment. And we found several indicators for different four components of indoor environmental quality, thermal environment, indoor air quality, acoustic environment, and visual environment. Specifically for this uh, uh, webinar, Indoor air quality, you can see there are about 39 indicators that have been used and are proposed in different uh, certification methods for uh, rating indoor environmental quality in buildings. Altogether, for indoor environmental quality, we have about 100 indicators to rate indoor environmental quality, which one we should select and how to integrate all of those. There is no actually method, standardized method that was proposed uh, by which those indicators should be integrated or uh, a one um, approach that can be used to rate indoor environmental quality. Therefore, since we were not able to identify uh, the, the methodology that exists and adapt it for our purposes, we decided to develop our own uh, methodology. And that rating scheme that was developed is called TAIL. 
and it is uh, tail is coming from the four components of uh, indoor environmental quality thermal environment for T A, an acoustic environment for A, indoor air quality for I, and light or luminous visual environment for L. On top of it, so so the method is rating each of the four components of indoor environmental quality, and on top of it, it is determining the overall uh, indoor environmental quality. And all is presented by one label, uh, uh, and that is um, presented on this slide to the right, where TAIL have different colors representing quality levels, and inside the label, there is a, uh, um, the overall quality of indoor environment that is represented by the Roman numbers. There are four colors that represent four different quality levels, uh, green, yellow, orange, red, to meet or to uh, basically be similar uh, as uh, the colors that are used for the energy labeling and also red uh, traffic light and so on. And there are four quality levels that are compliant uh, with the standard EN16798. Why this standard? Because this standard is supporting EPBD. And the idea was to develop a methodology that is used during renovation of uh, energy renovations uh, of buildings that are mandated by the um, EPBD. And this standard defines four, category, um, four categories of indoor environmental quality from the highest level to the lowest level, from one Roman one to Roman four. So, so this is so far so good. I mean, th this is a concept um, fairly simple, uh, not, uh, I would say even trivial or crude, but the question now still remains. So how do we define the quality of all, all the components, considering that there are maybe 100 different parameters that define indoor environmental quality? So what we do? So again, we had to be pragmatic and um, uh, define some uh, criteria on how we select the parameters that define tail components. And those criteria are listed here. And uh, these uh, included the parameters that may be changed due to the process of deep energy renovation. So <laughs> ideally we could modify indoor environmental quality, but energy retrofit does not have a, an aim to improve indoor environmental quality. Indoor environmental quality can be improved uh, in the process of energy, uh, uh, energy renovation. So um, in this process of um, energy renovation, several aspects of indoor environmental uh, quality can be improved. And those parameters that can be improved should be represented in tail and should be measured. Then in order to um, uh, make it possible for a quick adoption of our scheme, uh, the parameters that are included in building certification schemes and standards should be included. Next, in order to make it possible to measure, uh, you know, tail or rate tail, we need to include parameters that can be measured and are modeled to allow verification and are not expensive and do, do not require very sophisticated analytical methods for the measurements. Also, parameters that have been shown to affect aspects of, you know, our work and life, well-being, health, productivity, comfort should be also included because they can allow later to estimate the economic implications of improved indoor environmental quality if any improvements is observed as a result of um, energy retrofit. And no parameters that directly measure comfort, well-being, health and productivity should be included, including the um, uh, occupant uh, ratings uh, of the uh, IEQ in buildings. So we end up in the list of 12 parameters uh, that are listed here. There is indoor temperature for T, noise level for A, several parameters for indoor air quality, as you can, uh, as you have seen from the previous presentation, this is probably where we are lacking, you know, the uh, some standard measurements. And then for L, daylight factor in illuminance. All those parameters are measured except for the uh, uh, one parameter, which is daylight factor, which is modeled and one which visible mold, which is a visual inspection. 
if we compare those parameters with the parameters that are included in standards and um, green building certification schemes and environmental assessment frameworks they basically are in, uh, all of them um, many of them are included in those um, uh, uh, documents and actually by re uh, by using those certifications actually tail to some extent can be also established or can be measurements can be supplemented so that the tail can be determined as well we also developed the rating protocol including the measurements uh, protocol and so on so on for each of the parameter this is an example for temperature for which we develop the um, a range of the levels or te temperature levels for different types of buildings uh, in which we define the quality level based on the measured temperature uh, in a building, uh, uh, green, yellow for, for quality levels. We did it for every single parameter and also provided information how uh, those parameters should be measured. The most important part of the um, metric or the uh, rating scheme rather than a metric, sorry, is that uh, actually it allows the termination of the overall level of IAQ. Here we decided uh, in order to promote uh, or in, to make an incentive for improving IAQ to use the quality, overall quality level as the lowest level be among the par components defining a tail. So, if any of the parameters are read, they uh, define the quality level of four, then uh, the overall quality level of IQ should be also red or four. If all of, if any of them is um, orange or above, then the quality level is three, uh, Roman three and orange and so on and so on. It can be debated whether this approach is correct, but Mark, has already showed how this is beneficial. And also uh, this approach is used for determining the quality of outdoor environment, uh, outdoor air quality, so, um, and water quality and so on. So uh, basically the worst parameter is defining the overall quality. As I said, we developed the measuring protocol. I don't have much time to go into details about the measuring protocols. Uh, I can tell you that we have a paper under review in energy and buildings, and uh, that is describing the detail and the protocol very um, um, precisely there. So in summary, uh, not to take more time uh, of yours, uh, we um, propose the framework for rating um, IQ and its components. It's called TAIL. And it was developed mainly for offices and hotels. We, be we believe that it can be adapted to any other building in the future and the buildings that undergo deep energy renovation, but also to the to, as a general uh, uh, rating scheme in the future. It integrates all IEQ components and it's based on actual measurements. So it's actually providing information on actual performance, not assets of a building, but actual performance of a building. And there are no arbitrary credits that are given. To, uh, to rate T, A, I, and L. The arbitrary decision is made on the overall uh, quality of indoor environment because we don't have information how to integrate those four components at that moment. So uh, the, all of them are uh, treated equally and um, it is uh, addressing the EPBD uh, mandate it, it refers to uh, standard EN 16799 and also WHO guidelines. And uh, we believe that even though it is crude, it is expected to increase the interest of investors in IEQ. So what are our future uh, developments? That uh, We are already working on so-called predictail uh, or the prediction tool that would allow predicting indoor environmental quality at the design stage of the renovation. So this is one of the uh, uh, short term, uh, short -term um, uh, activities, and we hope to present that tool earlier, later this year. Later on, we need to uh, certainly um, further develop the tail, uh, considering whether the new parameters should be um, included uh, for the measurements, and spe specifically looking at the sensitivity between the different 
uh, 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 sensitivity of detecting the differences between building. In the long frame, we believe that tail can be supplemented by other, you know, uh, uh, um, um, other tails, uh, uh, including, you know, uh, occupant uh, evaluations as well. It, it can be connected to the economic um, economic benefits, so to it can be monetized in a sense. So I'll stop here, and I thank you for your uh, uh, attention, and uh, I'll be happy to address any questions that they may come. And here there's a little bit of information about the Alden project.